This is the animation <coughs> we're going to reproduce in uh, incremental programs. And we've done, I think, five videos so far on it. And the last video, we made the pointers appear and disappear, but we had them appear and disappear in a circular motion, which uh, was easy to write, but isn't what we want. What we want is to actually simulate the way a nested for loop works with the uh, two pointer coming down and the from pointer going up, but only going up as far as b right below the two pointer. So that's kind of a complicated motion and we've got to figure out how to simulate that motion rather than just some simple animation motion. And it turns out there's a fairly simple way of doing it, but we need to make a paradigm shift. We need to think about things entirely differently than regular procedural programming. And this paradigm is a finite state automaton or a finite state machine. We've actually looked at this paradigm once or twice before in the past. But the basic idea of it is there's a finite number of states that the program can go into. And when it's in different states, there's different things that it can do. It's almost like a human in a way. When a human's depressed, you know, he, he cries and he mopes, and if he's happy, he laughs and he parties and whatever. So the different states of the program are, are like that, in that there's different things they do based on the state they're in. And one thing we want is a number of uh, integer constants that are used as symbolic values to represent the name of the state. And then we need uh, state methods, usually one method for each state. And what the state methods do is first they do the work of the state, including updating what's called state variables that, that are used in an initializing the work of whatever the state does. And then they ch check whether certain conditions exist and change the state if those conditions exist. And two types of variables we need are system parameters, which define the limit of the machine, and state variables, which change as the machine run. They're really the, the mechanism that works, makes the machine work in a lot of ways. And then there's also usually a hub method that's sometimes called a traffic clock that checks the state and then calls the appropriate message method based on what state you're in and also an initialization method that defines the system parameter values and also defines any kind of global variables and graphics and animation objects and things like that that we need in order to get the whole system starting to run. So if we look at the new code behind, these are the four symbolic values that represent the four states, start processing, increment primary, which is the two pointer, decrement secondary, which is the from pointer, and done processing. And these are the system parameters we need to define the limits of the machine, the first node and the last node. And these are the uh, system variables, primary index and secondary index. And also, of course, FSA state, which is a variable that contains what state we're currently in. And we need to change the pointer array. Before we had just one pointer array, pointer of pointers, and or a array of arrays. And in this case, we need two, one for the primary, which is the two pointer, and one for the secondary, which is the from pointer, since these are now working relatively independently, unlike the previous animation. And the form load is the initialization method. So it sets the limits of the machine. The first node is zero and the last node is four for our five directories. And it sets up everything in general the same way it was before with the solid brushes and the pins and the graphics and establishes the uh, interval and the event handler for the uh, tick function that actually implements the uh, animation. And then we get to our four state methods. The one for the initial state, which draws the five rectangles. 
and then sets the primary index to the first node and the secondary index to the last node because you remember the two pointer starts at the first node and the from pointer starts at the last node and then it draws the initial pointers in red and black of the from and to and it sets the state of the finite state automaton to decrement secondary which means the next state it's going to go into is decrement sec sec decrement secondary <laughs> hard to say I guess so immediately we've got a state change specified by our state method and the next one is decrement secondary pointer which basically uh, makes the pointers disappear and appear and decrements the secondary index and then it checks if the secondary index is equal to the primary index plus one which means it's right under the two pointer and if it is it changes the state to increment primary and if it isn't it keeps the state in the same state of decrement second secondary and then the increment primary pointer uh, method basically makes the primary pointer disappear and reappear or actually makes both the secondary and the primary pointer disappear in this code and then it sets the secondary index to the last node so what we're doing with the increment primary pointer is resetting the machine, resetting the secondary pointer to the bottom of the uh, the list and then we're incrementing the primary pointer to the next directory and then rewriting both the uh, the pointers to the new locations and then we're checking if the primary point index is equal to the last node minus one which is as far down as it can go and if it is we switch to dumb processing otherwise we switch to decrement secondary as you can see most of the time we're in decrement secondary it's the most active state and then in the done state we basically make the uh, primary and the secondary pointer disappear and set the state to start processing again so if we s specify continue going we'll now be in the start processing mode and this is the hub function I was mentioning it's the step function and remember the step function is called by the timer too so this is really at the heart of the whole system and basically what it does is check the FSA state and depending on what state it's in if it's in start processing it calls the initial state method if it's an increment primary it calls the increment primary pointer method send decrement secretary secondary which it is most of the time it'll call the decrement secondary pointer and if it's in done processing it calls the done state so this is really at the heart of all the processing everything goes through here and it redirects everything it's a often called a hub method or a traffic cop so if we compile and run this and just hit the run you see it starts in the initial state with the pointer the two pointer at the top and the front pointer at the bottom and then the two pointer keeps uh, going down and the front pointer keeps going up but in a manner constrained by the rules of the machine so we've essentially essentially accomplished what we wanted it's probably the most uh, important video in a lot of ways because it's how we really get the simulation to work the way we want it to work well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe